Hi everyone, so in my video from a few weeks back, which was how to get a 7 in IB Visual Arts, I got a request to um, show my portfolio. So for context, I did indeed get a 7 in IB Visual Arts and I did get a 7 for my process portfolio. So I feel like that is indeed a bit of coursework that I feel confident sharing. I think that I worked really hard to include all the elements of the criteria that the IB wanted um, me to include. Um, so in that case, I think my portfolio could be a good example to sort of like base your portfolio off of. I will say, however, that I don't think it's a good idea to copy any specific things that I did, like focus on the general structure rather than specific examples that I did in my portfolio purely because um, the IB is still open to different art forms, to different techniques, to different themes that um, it might completely not make any sense for you to use some of the ideas that I use because your artistic direction might be completely different and that is why I think um, the general structure of my portfolio will be a lot more useful than like the specific things that I did. Um, so I'd focus on specific slides and the slide layout and elements that I included for a particular slide type rather than um, the specifics of what I did and like the actual artistic medium or like the artists that I chose. Um, and I know that some of you are probably stressing about your portfolios because I know it was like a very daunting um, bit of work for me. I personally kept uh, folders on my laptop throughout the duration of um, the IB course where I would just have folders for different weeks and different things that we did just so that I had photos of anything that I could potentially want to use when I'm finalizing my portfolio. In my second year of IB, I kind of started creating general slides months in advance. Honestly, I don't know if it was necessary because I ended up not using a lot of them. Um, the actual bulk of my work I did a month in advance. Honestly, like the most of my work I did a week in advance um, because that's when we started discussing our portfolios with our teacher once we were done with the exhibition work because that's honestly when you can actually like finalize your portfolio when you have your final bits of work. So I created a sort of layout of the 25 slides and uh, I had some general ideas, but it's honestly when you're putting everything together that it kind of makes more sense. It's only when you're actually assembling all the text and the images and the titles and everything that it kind of forms a cohesive narrative and it makes more sense. So I pulled like three all-nighters in the last week, which is not good. However, um, that was how I got to finish my portfolio a few days before the deadline. So I was actually able to submit it a few days in advance, which was honestly great because I know some people from my group were stressing the last day of the deadline, which um, I wouldn't recommend. <laughs> yeah, pulling those three all-nighters was honestly really worth it. And um, the three all-nighters were for both the comparative study and process portfolio simultaneously. So I feel like it would be even less time for just the portfolio if that's uh, the only thing you have left to do. So it's definitely doable. Um, it's just a very daunting piece of work before you actually create your layout, before you actually like start to think about it. It, it seems very daunting, but it's not that bad once you have an idea of what you want to do and once you actually get started. So I really hope that having a look at my process portfolio could be helpful, having some general ideas. Maybe if you don't know what to put on certain slides, maybe this will help you. I know that uh, it was really helpful for me to look at other people's example process portfolios. Even if we were doing completely different things, it was always nice to have a look at their slides to see what I might be missing. So I hope that um, my portfolio is helpful for someone out there. And good luck to any of you currently working on your process portfolios. I hope that this helps. So this is my process portfolio. It is 25 pages, including the introduction page, uh, which is the one you're currently seeing. Um, it is literally just the title as I wanted it to be quite clean and simple. Uh, and then the final page, which is just the list of figures. So apart from those, I have uh, 23 pages of content, which are, in my opinion, quite cramped. If I were to redo them, Today, I'd probably leave some more allowance and white space. Um, and also, since I made this a year ago, there's a lot of things I would probably change. Uh, however, the portfolio was graded well, so I think it's still worth having a look, even if I would do some things differently um, today. So the first page of my portfolio is an introductory page that would tell the examiner what I want to accomplish by the end of my portfolio. So that makes it a lot easier if you set specific intentions of what you would like to accomplish to create a sort of cohesive story, cohesive narrative. So by creating this uh, first page where you set your intentions, set your goals, say what you would like to achieve throughout the duration of the whole art course, it makes it easier to kind of create a specific narrative for the whole portfolio and then to uh, close it off and say what you accomplished, what you didn't accomplish. So I started by including some photos that I either took at the very, very beginning of my IB journey or even before. 
Um, they're just photos that I thought were in general pretty, but they didn't coincide with anything specific that um, I did for my uh, IB visual arts theme. And I also included my manifesto, which is a project that me and my friends did in our course where we wrote sort of intentions that we would like to have as artists. Um, it was a bigger project. It was a whole video project. However, I just included some of the text um, that I kept in my video. I highlighted some of the more important phrases in pink, which is a consistent thing throughout my entire portfolio. I have things highlighted or underlined in pink to kind of make them stand out more um, if an examiner perhaps wouldn't want to read everything. The most important standout details are highlighted and I think that just makes it a little bit easier for them. And I also think that since most of my portfolio is typed, I think that including a few elements um, that were handwritten by me and then scanned and included makes it a little bit more personal and like you can tell that an actual human did them rather than everything being just very uh, formal and typed. So the next page kind of um, connects to that as it is my initial intentions brainstorming slide. So I created um, a bit of a mind map, which as I said in my previous video, I think is a great way to kind of um, take up a lot of space in your portfolio, but also get the point across in a very easy way and also add some visual interest. But a mind map is something that you can very, very easily do on a scrap piece of paper. But I think that all in all, it's quite easy to make that looks quite nice and impressive. And it's not a boring a bit of text, but something that interests the viewer. Um, and apart from that, I also included um, a little pink area, as I said before. Uh, I highlighted some important aspects and I wrote in retrospect, which is my thoughts at the end of the process of making my portfolio. So the so the mind map and the initial intentions are all the things that I was thinking and saying at the beginning of the IB, but then the text that I added on pink was towards the end of completing the program, what I had learned, whether I had accomplished any of my initial intentions, etc. etc. And I also included some photos of my camera of me taking photos as again I thought that added a bit more personality before I actually got into um the work that I had done so um the next slide is uh I wanted to have some theoretical aspects so rhythm and art color schemes those sort of things are the things that you learn um, in the first weeks of your art course most probably but I wanted to include some of those elements um, and how they tie into my photography. So I just took some photos. Um, they're not connected in any way, shape or form. They're photos that I thought were kind of nice. Um, I just chose a photo for every type of rhythm so that I had some sort of theoretical background. I also included a little quote at the top, which I think is nice to do. Um, and the next slide is similar. It's exploring the color wheel. So again, I talked about uh, different types of color schemes and this actually ties into my final work because the color scheme was actually quite important uh, for my final pieces I had a pretty consistent color scheme um, so I think that this experimentation at the beginning um, was quite important for my portfolio and I also included two different color wheels that I made myself in one of the first weeks of visual arts actually one of them is done in watercolor and one of them is done in dry pastel and I think it's just nice to see how different uh, media uh, present the colors differently um, and again just like another nice little visual aspect but also adds a little bit of personality. Um, then we finally get on to one of my actual concepts for working with my art. So working on uh, my photography was quite chaotic throughout the last two semesters of the IB and it, there's definitely no way that you'll have this sort of perfectly curated a cohesive narrative because you are going to get sidetracked by different artists and different projects and stuff like that however um in your final portfolio you would like to ideally unify it and make it uh, more chronological even if it didn't necessarily actually happen in that order you want to present it kind of uh, logically so that it makes sense for the examiner so this slide kind of let me um talk about one of the more basic concepts that i explored in my photography which is the inside outside concept um, which is just working with windows, looking, using windows as frames, using windows as um, a medium through which we can view another um, image, another landscape. Um, and the slide also allowed me to use different types of media. So I had digital photography, film photography, and watercolor. Now, watercolor isn't something that I particularly experimented in. However, I think it's nice to include a few other art forms other than the main one that you're practicing in. Even if you're not fully comfortable or great at using a particular medium, I think that having them here and there just makes your portfolio a bit more interesting. 
Um, and again, even though my final work was digital photography, I do have a lot of elements of film photography throughout the entirety of my portfolio. So I also included a little photo of my film camera, the film that I like to use. Um, and again, I think that adding those photos of you at work or the tools that you use kind of makes your portfolio a little bit more interesting. Then I actually started investigating artists. And I think this is very, very useful, not only for the purpose of the comparative study, but also for making your work and your artistic journey progress. Um, so here I continued with the inside outside concept that I had talked about on the previous slide, but here I kind of backed it up with an artist and I tried to emulate what he was doing and his work, even though what Wyeth did was a painting and what I did was photography, I still tried to emulate certain features that I found interesting in his work and mine. And I also think that compositional sketches as the one that I did are just like another way to uh, graphically present what you're trying to say, which makes the portfolio slightly more engaging. Um, and again, I included some of the more important text on the pink background because I think that just helps it stand out a little bit more. And this is another slide on uh, my wife experimentation. I have another little mind map. Um, I think it's helpful to include a lot of different photos, even if you're not 100% happy with all of them. I think including more and then what I did was I had a little arrow and that pointed to my final exhibition piece. I think um, if you're able to explain why you chose those particular pieces and not the others, in the case of photography for example, it really helps what in particular is it about your art or an artist's piece um, that you find interesting and why you think one piece is more successful than a different one. And I also included a few paragraphs talking about why in particular I continued the experimentation, what I found helpful with the previous photos, and why I chose those specific images on the right as my exhibition piece rather than some of the ones before. Um, and also I talked about the few edits and um, changes that I made to the raw image um, to make it the final piece that it was. Then I had another um, artist that I investigated, Wilhelm Hammershoy. So this was similar to what I did with uh, Andrew Wyeth, as in I talked about the composition of the painting, uh, what I personally found interesting in the painting, and what I would like to try to emulate in my own work. Again, my work is photography, but his is a painting, but uh, I found particular things about the composition, the angularity, the color scheme interesting, and I tried to bring that to my own work. Mm, and again, I have some bold titles for similarities between uh, my work and Hammershoy's work, and I talked about the editing process so that the examiner can see that I did, um, in fact, think through the composition of the photo, the specific details and elements of the photo, and why I made particular editing choices um, to try to emulate the work of Hammershoy. Then another concept that I pursued in my work is the idea of reflections and I actually got inspired by a poem by Sylvia Plath and I tried to show in this slide what particular elements uh, in the poem inspired me for my own work um, so I highlighted them again in pink and, and that's what I talked about in this text I think it's also helpful to include elements as I did my developed film just to show the process of my work as well as one of the photos because um, the idea of the reflection of the artist and uh, my work is a theme that will become a little bit more prominent in following slides. And then again, I did another artist um, investigation. This one was particularly um, interesting to me as it had some contextual information that tied close to home. Uh, and again, I talked about the composition of the piece and how in particular it ties into my own work. Here I moved more towards mirrors and reflections rather than windows and frames. However, there still was the consistent theme of looking through an object to see the world. Um, and here there's a different theme than the one on the previous slide because before we had the artist present in the reflection, now we have the artist absent in the reflection, but both themes were something that I found interesting and I wanted to continue looking at in my art. So this is another interesting slide as I included one for a piece of work that I wasn't 100% happy with and it's something that I ended up scrapping. Um, however, I think that it's quite nice to include something that you're not 100% happy with and saying why exactly that is. 
So I tried to emulate Emma Rubenstein's style a bit through her mirror photo. So on this slide, I included a sketch. I included some elements that showed how I assembled all the elements in my room to get the photo. I included a whole photo study to show how I made the selection of the final photo and I showed the edits and why in particular I chose to use a near neutral color scheme rather than a completely neutral one, despite the fact that Eva Rubenstein is known for her neutral color scheme. However, despite the fact that I had spent a lot of time on it, I had worked really hard on it, there was still something that didn't quite fit. Um, I liked the piece, but there was something that just didn't uh, sit right with me. So I wanted to continue with that concept, but use a different mirror, use a different focal point, um, change the whole setup. But I still included this whole process because experimenting with this mirror is what allowed me to make a piece of work that is more similar to Eva Rubinstein's. Now I did this uh, twofold. One of them was digital photography and one of them was film photography. Personally, I preferred the digital photograph even though Eva Rubinstein used film. I think that I was able to emulate her style more using digital photography purely because of the lighting and um, and the way that the final piece ended up looking. However, seeing as that was her medium of choice, I still wanted to have a photo study of film. The lighting again was quite different, especially due to the flash, so I edited it slightly. But again, I had quite a few experiments um, with this photo as it really intrigued me and I tried to emulate it in several different ways and I think that if I had only included the quote-unquote best one, which in my opinion is the film one, I would have lost a lot of the valuable reflections that the IB loves um, that I got from some of the other pieces that I talked about. Then I went to yet another artist that I um, investigated for my work and that was Saul Leiter. Saul Leiter was kind of a pivotal moment in my visual arts journey because um, honestly he was one of my biggest inspirations for my work. He has a lot of spontaneous city photography that includes a lot of framing, mirroring, which is essentially what I was going for in my work. So I did some little drawings and sketches and um, notes on some of his photos and I included them in as those were the elements that I found most interesting for my art and that's kind of what I talked about here. And then I tried to emulate some of the elements I noticed in his work and mine, which is kind of a, a very repetitive process because that's essentially what I did for all the artists that I had analyzed previously. Uh, but I think that all of them added something to my work and I think it's really valuable that I included all of them because all of the individual elements that I learned really added to my final photography. So again, I included a few photos here that were my initial uh, photos that I took right after uh, my first a bit of investigation of Saul Leiter, but he will um, come back in further slides. Um, then for one of uh, the slides, since I did edit a lot of my photos quite significantly, I wanted to include one slide for the editing process. And I talked about the program that I used, the camera that I used, um, the setup that I used, and I included a few of the editing steps just so that I could describe the specific steps that I did for some of my photographs. Um, obviously, I didn't do the same exact edit for all of them because it really depends on the photo. However, I felt that this photo, because it was so dark and I had to change quite a lot in it to make it look quite bright and light um, and just the final stage, I thought this would be a good one to use um, in my editing process slide. Um, and again, I think it's quite a useful photo to have, especially if you're doing photography, because there's not a lot of things other than the editing process that you can really do a step-by-step -step slide for. Then I had a little media experiment. Uh, this is actually one of the final things I did. I did this about a week or two before the actual process portfolio deadline. However, my teacher suggested it as I did a lot of layering, a lot of framing, a lot of reflections in my work. She suggested that I play around with bits and pieces of paper, plastic, frames, just little paper cutouts, whatever I could get my hands on and to take different photos to see how they look layered upon each other. And honestly, it was very, very easy to do. And all I had to do was really talk about um, the rich sense of overlapping layers. How can I convey them in my photography, in my work? Yeah, it was just a slide that um, wasn't difficult to make. The experiment wasn't difficult at all, but I feel like it was a really great way to physically present what I was trying to convey in my photography. And on the left, I had another photo of salt lighter because I just felt that the layers and textures experimentation wasn't extensive enough for it to warrant uh, a whole slide, so I just split it in half. And then I had another artist that I investigated, and this is Vivian Mayer. So similarly to all the previous slides, I have some elements which I used over and over and over again, and that is the mind map, the arrows from the editing process, using the pink background to highlight the most important part of my slide, 
Um, and I essentially did in this photo what I did the previous ones, which is I just talked about how particular elements of her photography impacted my own work. This is another little photography experiment I did through Vivian Mayer's photo as well as different photo that I found online. I wanted to experiment with reflections but in puddles, so I did do one of those pieces that I actually did like. Um, however, I also added this refined concept on the side as the IB does like progress, so I included some photos that in my opinion were very ugly, but I thought um, compared to the one that I did on the right actually made it look a lot better. Uh, so I think that including that unsuccessful puddle photograph section on the side kind of made all the pieces on the right look a lot better and, and show the progress. I think it kind of shows that through this experimentation, I realized what particular artistic choices influence the final photograph. And that is why primarily I decided to include the refined concept section. And I did another media experiment, this one with glass shards. Um, this one I just did by breaking a lot of bits of glass that I had lying around. These were just glass jars that I shattered. I painted their edges copper because I liked the look of that and I experimented with them. I took a lot of photos with different forms of light um, and I just talked about how this experiment helped me further uh, my reflection photos. <laughs> I assembled it in different arrangements, in different positions, I used different light, and I took a lot of photos, um, and I talked about how the particular ways of assembling glass and playing around with it helped me further my, my photographic experimentation. And then I came back to Saul Leiter and how I used some of his specific pieces to uh, develop my own work. For example, I was really intrigued by this photo, this self-portrait uh, between the two mannequins, and I tried to create a very similar one. So I um, put a few different photos that I took that day, um, and then the final one th that I decided to choose, and this ended up being one of my exhibition pieces. And then another cool slide, I think, when you're doing photography is to include a lot of photos that you took, uh, even if several of them are ones that you will not end up using finally but do what I did and circle around the ones that you do like and say why in particular you like them, especially since one of mine was an exhibition piece. But I think this is a great opportunity again to say why you think some pieces work and why they don't. You can talk about how specific artistic qualities make some photos more successful than others. And I think that this kind of allows you to argue that photography in fact is an art medium that takes a lot of work, a lot of time, and there has to be specific compositional qualities or artistic qualities that are fulfilled for it to be a good piece. And you can't exactly just go around taking random photos because they won't all turn out great. Some of them are good and some of them are not. So I think this was the main purpose of this slide. And it also is an opportunity to include a lot of your photos at the same time. And this was my favorite photo um, that I took throughout my IB program. I think it included a lot of elements which I had been discussing on all my previous slides. So I blew up the image to basically take up the whole entire slide. And then I put a lot of arrows around and showed the particular features that I had studied throughout the last two years and how they were included in my work and why they made the piece as a whole work. I really like this photo. I still like it till this day, which says a lot because I don't really like some of my other pieces. This one I do like and I'm glad that I made this one kind of the focal point or one of the more um, important or interesting pieces in my portfolio. But I also think that this is like a nice summary um, that I included some of the titles from previous slides on this one to kind of summarize of my work, especially since I had a lot of investigating of other artists. So I took the titles from those investigations, included them here, and showed how those previous artists influenced my final um, and arguably most important piece. And then for one of my final slides, just as I had this sort of introduction at the beginning where I talked about what I would like to accomplish with my art, I did a mind map um, to show how my art has evolved over the last two years. I think that the IB loves these sort of reflections and I think that a final slide like this really helps with your narrative and visually presenting what you have just shown in your portfolio. And this is essentially a summary of everything that I talked about before. So I had this sort of twofold division of exploring interiors and exteriors. And I have my individual concepts and experimentations that I had for both of these types of photography and how they kind of both tie together to create my final pieces of work. And then the final slide is just mostly text. But again, I think it's nice to have some reflections and I also put a small image of uh, my mind map from the first slide or one of the first slides 
um, to kind of talk about specific elements that I initially wanted from my mind map and I made them bold here um, and I talked about whether or not I accomplished the individual things that I initially said that I wanted to accomplish and that was it I have a list of figures for my final slide but that is my grade 7 portfolio Thank you so much for watching this video if you've made it this far and I hope that my portfolio was useful to at least some of you. I hope that you got some inspiration. If you're stuck, um, I know that it's always nice to look at what other people did just to see what potentially you could add to your own work. And if you're currently in the middle of completing your IB course, good luck. Um, I know it's really hard in the moment, especially if you're watching this around the time that I'm uploading this. Um, if you're in IB2, I know that it's tough right now, um, but honestly, once you're done, it'll be the best feeling. And I really, really hope that um, once you're done with the IB, you can look back on all the work you did and be really proud of what you've accomplished because honestly, it's so much work. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. <laughs>